Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West End Fair TV's post match Pint, the only post match for that show <laughs> on the internet. Uh, we've just come back from the West Ham game. It was West Ham 1, Manchester City 3. Um, I'm not too disappointed. I'm, I'm going to say this now, right? And I know a lot of people are going to turn around and go, oh, you know, you shouldn't want to... I, I, look, don't get me wrong, I don't want to lose games. But if you're going to lose a game, that's a game you're going to lose. Yeah, people say it's a small club mentality. You know, it needs to be ambitious. But who is stopping this team? Who is stopping Harlem? What we've always asked for in these games is a performance. Is to put an effort, put a fight in, and today we showed that. You know, by the way, we've sorted that. We heard your complaints, the audio last time. We're in a room, same place, sports bar and grill, Canary Wolf. Do come down, thank you, Tim. They're giving us a room. We heard you. We listened. We're trying. Listen, we are trying to sort all the audio issues out. We're having audio issues. We said it last week, but we are having audio issues. But we're trying to sort them out. You know, yes. you give it, give it time. We're trying to get this perfect. Yes. So. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, go back to the game. It's, it started off... We started electric. Yeah, we did, yeah. To be we fair, did, we yeah. started electric. I mean, the first three, four minutes, we was all over them. We was going at them, we was catching them in possession, you know, but there was just the one chance um, is the Antonio chance at the front. Now, I can only see it from across. I haven't seen the highlights, right? I don't even know whether the highlights could, could get across. He was on the line. Yeah. yeah, and so, for some, some area didn't go in. I think when you get, get a team like Man City, we see it a couple of times today. You catch them and you keep them banging on the door before they can get hold of the ball. You've got to make them chances count. Yeah. And that was one for me today. If we'd have started with that goal, I think it could have been a different yeah. game today. I really do. You know, looking at the starting lineup going into it, I was happy with the starting lineup. I saw it and I thought, that is as good a team as you can put out. And on Antonio, uh, you know, I'm critical of Antonio. His finishing sometimes is appalling. But I thought he was the right choice over full crew to play Man City for this type of game. The type of player he is, he, he's just frustrating at some t- sometimes with the chances he misses and, the, you know, opportunities he fluffs. That's my only thing about him. But he dropped Suchek, brought in Alvarez Rodriguez together. And, yeah, listen, I liked... I, what I like about Lopetegui is there's a feeling like there's a tactical thought process to what he does. So he's starting lineups, to his substitutions, yeah. to how we change his second Yeah, I, I saw that today because he started Alvarez and Rodriguez. I always thought that it was going to be an Alvarez-Rodriguez um, partnership. I always, I always thought that he was going to favour that, especially in today's game. Yeah. Um, listen, we've all been talking about Souffal starting, Talibo, who, who we didn't see today. I didn't think this was a game for him. I mean, I think he would have had nightmares after today um, with a really big marking. But, um, you know, I always thought that he was going to go more defensive. He's built a squad, yeah? The transfer market's done now. We see Soler come out of the pitch before that. Um, so that's his squad now, right? Has he left himself a little bit light up front? Possibly. You know, I would say possibly because Paul Crud, with all due respect to him, He's been coming on the games. He's been struggling to get into the games. Now, I know you've got to give these players, you know, a, a little bit of time to bed in. Yeah. But I do feel like he's been, um, you know... He, I don't think he's left us light up front through lack of trying. He no, did no, no. seem to chase Durant. Oh, really Durant. He, scored he scored again scored today. again today. And you look at it and you think, we paid 25 mil for Gilmer. Could that money have gone to a Durant? I get the thought process of... Duran didn't play many games last season. You know, we want to, we don't want to get mugged off. But still, in hindsight, now you think, just pay that money, and we've got an ideal player. Now we've got Ings, Antonio, Fulcrum. I said this to you on the preview, free or whatever it was. Very aging. Very aging. Very aging forwards. And, yeah. yeah. There's nothing like you can bring on a striker with a burst of energy to come on and run things ragged like a most need like a, a Diafra Sacco type player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah. Just run I, I, at the I, I think Duran would have been perfect. I yeah. think Duran would have been perfect. Um, don't know much about Solia. I'm going to be honest. I, you know, I, we've been hearing about this name all summer, um, and it, it came off on the last day of the uh, transfer window. So it's obviously someone they've been chasing. Yeah, Lopetegui. I think he knows them from Spanish national team. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fornals recommended us to him, and love Fornals. You know, said so yeah, go West Ham. You'll love it. You'll love the fans. So, love for now. But I think he's going to be... Rodriguez, to me, is a little bit more of... 
uh, an Alvarez backup. Like he is more of a defensive midfielder, whereas Soler is going to be more of that you know proper center direct, midfielder yeah. direct. Yeah, going forward. So Alvarez holds, um, and then Soler creates, takes shots, goes for goals. That sort of thing. So it gives us that balance. So when we do face a man, so if he does want to want to play, go more defensive. Rodriguez, Alvarez, we can or play Soler. So yeah, it gives us that option. But yeah, Wambasaka came in at first start at right back for us. Um, I think he was really good. Yeah, well, Kilman was really good again today. Regardless of, of you know conceding three goals, I thought he was really good. Um, I thought Wambasaka was good. I thought that was all good. I, I honestly, the only one I've, I've, I've got, I'm a bit critical of and. It's, it's hard to be critical on him because this is his game. Was Lewis Pacata? Uh, Lewis? Lewis? Lucas? Lucas. <laughs> um, Lu- Lucas Pacata. Who the fuck's Lewis Pacata? What's his brother, right? It's his brother. It's the one who put the belt um, for him. Lucas Pacata. Um, it's the way he plays, but, you know, and I, I, I said this to you when I was coming here. The past few games, we've had, we've had, we've conceded these stupid chances by our own design, yeah. And I do understand, yeah. And, and this is what everyone's got to understand as well. We're learning to play in a different way, yeah. A lot of these players that are starting still are still Moyes players, yeah. You know, that's you know, without a shadow of doubt. It seems to like that Mavropanos at, at centre back pairing, which I, I think, to be fair, I think they've 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 done well together, uh, Kilman and Mavropanos, but. We're learning a new way to play, and there's going to be mistakes. But I did say this against Villa, we've done it a few times. Against Palace, we've done it a few times. Against Bournemouth, we've done it quite a lot of times. Today, I said, if we do that today, it's going to be game over. And ultimately, that was it. It was a stupid loose ball from Pakatar, or you know, it, it, I've I've watched it back. Yeah, I've watched this back. Yeah, Paqueta, he got a lot of stick in the moment. It looked to me like it was a poor pass from Emerson. And but it's still a poor Paqueta. pass. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. So Emerson, he's passed it and it's, Paqueta's just had to outstretch his foot to try and bring it under control. Can't quite get to it. It, it comes off the end of his toe, yeah. yeah. Comes off his toe and then they pick it. So I think he's got a lot of the stick because obviously from where we're sitting, sometimes it's hard to see. It looks like he's tried to control it and he's been caught slipping. But yeah, Emerson, it's just switching off, not, you know, just a slack pass. And you can't do that against Man City. And, but that's what we've been doing quite a lot. You know, coming out from the back, they want to try and you get this to the point where you're coming out. I mean, you look at the way City passed the ball. It's, it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke of the team. You know what I mean? But I think we we're trying to develop into something like that. But there's still players there that, you know, it still all needs to gel together. And I, I need to say this. I said this when Lopetegui took over. It's going to take 10 games. Yeah. It's going to take 10 games to get a settled side for the new signings to bed their self in, to sort of get that sort of momentum going. And we've had a tough start, you know, from Villa, who were top four contenders. Um, they won again today, I believe. Um, Palace, who ended the season brilliantly and we beat them. And Man City, really, in the Premier League, you can't pick many more difficult starts. Difficult starts yeah. I would rather, have, instead of Villa, I would have rather have a, a Chelsea or Tottenham, because yeah. I think I think the crowd are meant to get again. But Villa yeah. was a very tough game. Um, as I said, we're certainly a whisker away from drawing the game now. We beat Palace, beat Bournemouth by the skin of our teeth, don't get me wrong. Um, and, and today we've lost the game. But there's a, there's moments in them, in them games that you, you wouldn't have got under. Yeah. You know, Kudus has been electric. Kudus has been absolutely electric. But there's moments in them games that you wouldn't get under David Boyce. Yeah, the difference is, look, we've had um, games against Man City and the Moyes where we, it was like 2-1 to Man City or 2-0. It was like, it weren't a battering. But in those games, like, it was just mostly us defending for most of it. There weren't, like, as many opportunities as we had today. Like, we had moments to get excited, to feel like, oh, my God, we're going to do something. You know, could we hit the post? There was chances there. But for a lot of the game, we didn't finish them chances. But that's what we want to see. We don't want to be sitting there for the majority of the game thinking, you know, are we ever yeah. going to get onto this ball? Are we ever going to have a touch? Um, and I think that's the difference, you know, rather than beyond just the scoreline. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I do agree with that. I think that, what you, you know, what Man City do really well, which, you know, other teams are not going to have a chance. We were pressing at times. 
but we were holding off at times. And uh, you know, it's frustrating when you see yourself holding off. But there was times when we pressed at the right times. But what Man City do really well is that you get that sort of momentum going, and then all of a sudden they sort of switch that off. You know what I mean? Like they turn around and, and go right, get bold of that ball and keep it for the next five minutes and don't get them a touch. And it 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 it, it doesn't give you like, you know you, you get them bits where you you know the coolest chance. When we had that sort of that section of play, we had sort of five ten minutes where we was going at them and you're thinking, right, this is going to come now. This is going to come. If you got to score in that moment because what Man City do really well is they get that ball back and then they go right, keep this ball now, take that sting out of the towel. And you have to reset everything. And that's what, you know, not a lot of teams are going to do that. I'm going to be honest, not a lot of teams are going to do that at all. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just the, the level of just clinicalness is unbelievable. I see um, Ariola getting some stick, which I think is so harsh because, again, you know, the first goal. I don't think he's been great this season, though. I'm going to be honest, I don't think he's been great. He's not been his normal self. Yeah, I mean, I've, listen, I think the, the De Bruyne chance. He pulled off a fantastic save for that, which one tries to curl it in. But yeah, obviously, he's not up to speed. We're not seeing the amazing shot stops. You know what I mean? We've seen a few, to be fair, but not as many. You know, last season, other than Onana, he pulled off the most saves in the league, which shows you, like, the defence he had in front of him. He's got a defensive front of him that's not as bad, but still, when I mean, Kilburn's done brilliant, but still getting up to speed. Yeah. Today, I can't look at a single goal and think you know he should have done better no it's gold class and to be fair and this is this is what i said about the, the difference between them it they weren't peppering our goal you know what i mean like apart from the three goals and at the point chance i don't really remember one i don't remember it being scrambles across the goal you know mm, what i mean yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't remember it. Yeah, yeah. um whereas like under 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 Moisey, there would be like them, them sort of bigger chances. You'd, you'd just be conceding shot after shot after shot after shot after shot. But we did. I, I haven't seen the stats. I might be completely wrong, but I'm just saying what it felt from, like from when yeah, I was sitting it did, there watching. It didn't it. feel like we were riding our luck for large no, portions no, no. of the game. No, no, that's you know that's that's a positive. Like I said, you know, and that's all you can ask for in these games is the team to just give you something. To, like I felt like at two one down, I felt we could get an equaliser. I thought it was gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna be it felt like it was coming, didn't it? Like yeah. it really did. And you know, when you're when you're chasing it, you know, you, we was obviously for the third goal. We had a high line. He was pushing up. It's a risk. There's a chance you leave yourself exposed. Oh, but, but I think against ball. a team like City, you've got to take that. You risk. have to because what what's the difference? We lose two one or three one. Eightieth minute, eighty first minute, eighty second minute, eighty third minute, something like that. Yeah, it was right near the end. Of, you know what? Like I said, it's a difference between losing two one or free one, or uh, potentially getting the point. And so you might as well take that risk. And look, they've, they've punished it, but I'm glad we didn't just try and like sit back and, and hope we get a chance to counter them. Like we did, because that, that, the thing is, my, one of my biggest complaints the last few years has always been when we go, when we lose it, we never look like a team chasing, chasing the game. The game. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like usually when you see the team, the team behind, they're the one putting on the pressure. They're throwing cautions of win. They're just pushing up and pushing up, and you feel like the goal's coming. Whereas us, we'd go behind a lot of the time, and nothing to change. Uh, yeah, just try to try and lose two 0 Yeah, that's it. It would just be like, well, we're just gonna we're gonna be compact and, and wait for a moment where we can try and counter. Like, look, we had periods where we did have everyone behind the ball, but there isn't a team that you know maybe maybe even Arsenal. I've seen them do it actually against C. Like, who aren't going to be pressed back for moments of the game. But what I don't want to see is that for 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't see that for 90 minutes. That's why, that's what I, I, I'm, I was very encouraged by it. And I know a lot of people are going to say because of my boys. I mean, this is this is argument that's going to go on and on and on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I tweeted that last week. Should I be careful what I wish for? And I tweeted oh, hell. Oh. You know, but it's tongue in cheek. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be tongue in cheek, but people take this so seriously. Oh, yeah. This, this Moise in, Moise out debate. You know, there's still people that, that still don't, that didn't want to see him go, which which I understand. Look, everyone's got their, their choice. Everyone's got their opinion. But my opinion was he had to go. I'm sorry, but you know, but are you going to see this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards all season? No, it's tongue in cheek. Um, I've done it once, but you know, you really upset people when you do that. Sort yeah. Of thing, right? and, and like, you know, I mean, one geezer said, like, 
did you something about last week? I'll wait. And I was like, you wait for last week? What do you mean you're going to wait for last week? Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's going to wait for your answer from last week. And I'm like, all right, mate, yeah, chill out. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, obviously, the people but, do take it so serious. But, but yeah, it's, it's you know, we've got to give the geezer 10 games. Did, did David Moyes come in in 10 games and light the place on fire? No. 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 I mean, like, Lockatech is coming, big squad shift. You know, as, as, as much as, as I said, as I respect David Moyes, there is no denying in this in this day and age, mate, that he left that squad bare. He left it yeah. bare as fuck. He needed a big reboot. I'd like to see what happens when Solaire comes in. I mean, I don't know whether James Will Prowse going was the right thing, but I don't think I can't see him featuring. You know what I mean? And I, and I did say that under Lopetegui. I can't see him featuring. He just hasn't got them legs in midfield. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I think... You know, in terms of a backup to Soler, I think he he fits a little bit more than Suchek for me. But Suchek is a plan B. Suchek's an alternative to Soler. And when he come on today, I felt positive about him coming in because we're chasing the game. He can get a goal. We maybe want to go more direct. He's going to be getting into the box. That's what I want to see Suchek do. Not starting games where we want to. I try think and everyone the would admit that he's got. A, he has got a place in this squad, Suchek. If you're chasing a game, if you're defending the game, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sounding up there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's coming. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think on that basis, yeah, I'm happy. I just feel like with these with Tatarus Aguered and Ward Prowse's loans. Got them, we got their wages off the books. These are two players I think with, with, with resale value. Two players have got decent resale value. My problem is they go on loan for a season. When they come back, they've got one year left on their deal. Oh. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near the value we should be getting for them by that time. So I'm not thrilled with it. Apparently, we are looking at uh, free agent uh, centre backs. I think I think I saw. Because uh, Zuma went as well. Yeah, Zuma. So because because the thing is, you know, I had this out of a few people on Twitter, and because you know, I, I was saying we got three senior centre backs for two positions, and I think there will be times where he wants to play a three at the back, and which we've seen him do. I don't think that's enough. We've been talking about Casey, and oh, you want to give youth a chance. Out of all of the players to go on loan, I think he should have been going on. He needed to hey, go the most. Yeah, because I just don't think he's got the physicality. He needs to get used to playing against men, defending against men. Could you imagine him against like Harlan today? He's got the talent. He just needs yeah. to get the physicality side and he needs to bulk up a bit. So I think he could have done with a loan. And there's other players that we did send out that we could have kept to one of the youth. So the fact that obviously we're identifying free agents, I think Hummels, I think Ooh, Joe yeah. Gomez. Um, I think it's someone said. Well, like, I, I mean, when they said, I didn't click the article, but I'm sure I saw his face. Like when it said, like West Ham is exploring. So I don't know. West Ham is decent. This is injury record. Yeah, and uh, this is it. So the club have obviously identified that. Yeah, like Casey's not ready to be that backup. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, War Price and them. No problem with them because the surplus to requirements. I just want us to see us get the right value. And I think we've been, it seemed to be a desperation move. Like, we just, like, the deadline day was coming. It's like, shit, we need to get the wages off. Rather than planning for it and trying to move them on, it was. It seemed to be late. So we've done great buying. The selling, I think, we've done poor on. And I don't know whether that's a case of the infrastructure now and maybe started to get better or I, it's I think the it's, past. This. The players he wanted to get rid of, I think with the wages are wrong. Yeah. And the, the sort of structures of the deal they've got. Zuma. Yeah. I mean, his knees are fucked. His knees are fucked. You know, there was rumours that he failed a medical. I, I still think that's probably the case. Yeah. But they've pushed it through because he's a nut. But he, he doesn't go to anywhere I else. see him I don't know if you see this. Someone reported, this Santi guy, that he's on a two-year, it's a two-year loan. But he's he's last year of his contract. How the fuck does that work? No, I think he's got two years left. I think he's got this year and next year. No, I, thought, no, I checked. I checked. It was his last year of his contract. Unless it's unless it's we've got the option to extend. Yeah, it. maybe. Yeah, but then why be. would we, he might have the option? Well, maybe he must have it because why would we? 
Mm. You would just, because we're paying a portion of the wages. We're paying a portion of Ward Price's wages, I yeah. think 25% or 25 grand, wherever it was. Um, so yeah, it's it's the bad business of the past. I think it's coming back to haunt us. And I want to see well, us- A lot of players, you know, I don't want to keep going about David Moore, but a lot of players under David Moore is Danny Ings, uh, Kurt Zuma, I know you love Danny's, but to me, that is one of the worst signings we've ever made. Well, no, come on, like, let's be honest. You, I know for the money. For the money 100%. and for the output. Yeah, for what he's done. Like, you, talk, you talk about Alaire and Skamaka. Let's have this now. I never right? talk about Skamaka. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's, all right. let's put on Alaire. You said Alaire was the worst sign you ever made, right? Ings. Yeah, I, no, I think that Ings does surpass her. Yeah, I think things does surpass that because it's it's the, it's what you're paying for for the output, yeah. Um, and that's why I said to Halea because you we was paying Halea a lot of money, and and the output weren't great, but he's done more than he's. Yeah, you know what I mean, like he, you know, in that time, rumours are we might terminate his contract. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. To be honest, with yeah. you, I can see that happening. Um, it's just yeah, it's a baffling signing because, and I, I can't not. It was a desperation signing. Yeah. Yeah. It was a desperation signing at the time. You know, we was, in, we was in relegation trouble when we signed him. That's yeah, what people was. forget. You know, but when you sort of talk about David Moyes, people turn around and say about, oh, we've had fantastic years on it. That was a relegation battle the year before last. It was a relegation yeah. battle. But you still, I feel, even though you're in a relegation battle, you still need a plan of, well, is he going to come in and fit how we're playing? Like, is he going to... Yeah, but is he, I think at that time, you just think, we need goals. We need goals. And he just come up as, you know, as, as someone... And got us fucking... No two, goals. No goals. Two goals. Two, two goals Forrest. in one game. Yeah, in Forest, And then one goal in the conference. Neil Miller done better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eminike. Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably did. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Eminike. Gaskalainen. Uncle, Uncle Eminike. Yeah. So, I, what I want to see is, coming forward, is us operate in, in a more intelligent I'd way. Like to, I will be honest, I'd like to see a younger striker. Yes. I'd like to see a, not, I'd, I would have liked to see Duran. Yeah, that, um, that's probably going to really haunt us. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be one of them. And today, that's, you know, we could have done with someone like that. That has to be, if we can't get Duran, if Duran's now not possible, we it have to. possible now. Yeah. Two goals in three games. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably not. We need to start identifying that profile of striker out there, right? We have to. Full crew, I think a lot of people have, have written off full crew. He's come on today. Until I see him get a few games and us try to bring him into what we're doing, I'm not going to write him off. However, he's not, him alone is not the answer as a striker. Like him and Antonio as our options, I'm not happy with that. So, Going forward, we need to move away from an, from a side striker that needs service and that can create and can do runs and so that's what I want to see us do. But um, overall, I'm happy with the squad and I'm happy with with Lopetegui so far. Like I said, I'm not I'm, I'm going to be critical where I need to be. Yeah, yeah, critical. I think that's only really fair. I think that's you fair. know, with Lopetegui, so don't feel like because he's not Moyes, I'm just like yeah, I'm I'll Lopetegui but, propaganda. Let's be honest, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there, right? And I'm just putting the, the cat amongst the pigeons, as they say. Yeah. It's two losses out of three, three games. That is the truth. That is fact. In the Premier League, Premier two League. out of two in all comps. Yes, yeah. yeah Which was good. Premier League competition we did face in the cup. Um, yeah, it is. But again, like context is one of them teams context is Man City. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. One's Aston Villa, and one's Aston Villa finished in the top four, both in the Champions League. The team we beat. Palace, which, no, no home wins, no home wins. Yeah, that. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I was at the Bournemouth game, but I want to see a home win in the Premier League. And it's, I knew when I was when that Man City game, it was like, that's why I, was, I wanted that Aston Villa win so bad. I was. The draw, I think the draw would have done it. The draw, that Sucic chance. I mean, that is. Yeah, yeah that's, that's we need this. Is this is the worrying thing, and and. It's worrying, but it's not too worrying because these things, it shows you that we're creating good chances. It's just the, the, the finishing the chances. That is the thing that we need to at least bring fucking Teddy Sheridan back as a striking coach, um, you know, or someone like that. Yeah. Do you remember we did that? Yeah, we did. Yeah, he, he was a striking coach before, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, that's, the, that's the thing for me is we, we're 
playing the show, we're missing some glaring, glaring chances, and we need to work on that. Not training. today. I don't think there was too many chances. Today. No, but there I mean, there were decent. There were gla- there were a couple of glaring ones. I said the Antonio. The Antonio one at the start. And I've got to watch his back because it looked like to me he was on the line and he just didn't swing his leg. Um, he does that sometimes. Like he miss hits things. Oh and, god. Yeah, he's. I love him to bits, but he, he's so frustrating. And look, he's, let's, he's let's talk good. about a bit about Man City. Do you think they're going to win the league? I do. I do like Harland is just that's an animal. That's yes. that's an animal. Like, I'm, do you know what? I'm sick of him. I'm sick of him because he's like, listen, how can you be sick of someone that's, that's that's doing that for fun? You know what I mean? Like that is a, that is a robot of a striker. Yeah. But it's not his fault. It's, it's not his fault that he's that good. You know what I mean? Like, but it's it's one of them people. Like I don't hate him, but I hate watching him play because I just think it's just too easy for him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, you've got them them players who build up all this hope, and this geezer just comes along like a fucking like an android. Just ripping you to pieces. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, to play against, it's so frustrating. But to to experience someone that good and witness it, like, in your lifetime and look Dan, back on it. he done nothing. Yeah. he done nothing all the game. He touched the ball three times, probably. Like and the three times he touched yeah. it, everyone... That second goal was a joke. He just yeah. turned it off. He, he pulled it out of his feet. He smashed it in the top corner and just turned around as if he'd fucking just, just hit the post. But you know what? That's what I want to see from a number nine like we don't yeah, see that brilliant. enough today because we see a lot of these players like the Gabriel Jesus is where oh he does so much like in the game but score goals like it's he contributes it's a pure to the machine it's a, a pure 100 just a goal scorer like like a throwback he is kind of like a throwback and we don't see that but enough you know what today. it is he's like do you know what he is he's like um, he's like one of them footballers that you create do you know what I mean? Like yeah, on FIFA, and you put all the stats but, up. Yeah, but he's like, 99. he's got everything that Andy Carroll used to have. So he's got the strength, he's got the height. He can run yeah. like fucking Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he can hold the ball up like Alan Shearer. Yeah. You know, he can. He can listen. He ain't blessed with skill. I'm not going to say that. But finishing wise, man, best I've ever seen. So I'm saying, I remember like last people have been trying to push this like, oh, he's just an average football player. It's no, like, well. He, Average for you can be an average anything, mate. You can stick that ball in the back of the net. That is the most valuable asset yeah. in football. That's Bar it. Bar none, mate. You can, yeah, mate. You could have a donkey that couldn't be, you, that couldn't pass the ball from one yard to the next. Yeah? yeah, you can stick that ball in the back of the net as frequently as he does, mate. You're priceless. That that first goal, again, mistake from us. But he gets the ball bang. Yeah. How is many it? players do you know are doing that and getting that in? Just of that, like so many strikes, then you chance after chance after chance before they find that range and get it in. And yeah, like I said, look, it's I said this, I, I, I hate playing Man City because you f- just feel like it doesn't matter what you do, how no, good no, your no, team is. They just got you know the end result, they got the best of everything, yeah. You know, like, it, it's just it's annoying, it's annoying watching them, you know. What I mean, yeah. I get what Don was saying a few years ago, I mean, uh, he went viral, that oh, Man City, yeah. Man. They clipped him up, Man City. They clipped him. Man City, they self clipped him up, yeah. And it's, a, it's just boring watching them. And it is boring watching them because it's not boring, as in yeah. the football ain't boring. Football, but just knowing. But the, yeah, you can't do nothing. There's but, no one that can do anything. To be fair, like, and, and Man City get a lot of stick, but people forget, like, that's what Man United were like under. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, like, well, it was just, you just a foregone conclusion. Level. Oh, yeah, it's different. I think, I think what, what someone said to that about him being the best manager in the world, bar none, I think he's right. Do you know what the, yeah. Do you know what the difference is with Man United, Fergie, Man United, Man City? Man City, most times in the game, it'll be like, yeah, they're going to win. And if they're winning, they're ahead. Man United, in the Fergie, more character about them. they would like go behind so many times and win, come back late in the game. They would give you that little bit of hope, like yeah, they're yeah. losing. And then Man City do this sometimes, but most of the time they're just clear. Yeah, but then, like last week, Ipswich, they're at home. They can see the second minute goal to Ipswich. You know, hold on a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. 18 minutes, they're 4 1 up. Yeah. 3 1 up. Man, U- Man United under Fergie, they would have waited until the 90th minute and yeah, banged yeah, in yeah. like 3 4. Like, Mate, you know, but yeah. looking around the Premier League as well, cut the draws, you know, Villa win. It's hard uh, to see 
It's hard to really gauge where we're going to be this season. Yeah, we've obviously made our predictions, which are uh, a bit funny. Listen, I think we've got to have a run of games. We've still got a tough run of games coming up. We've got Fulham. We never find Fulham easy. We never find it easy. Yeah, easy. and they've gone out and, and really and some invested. Good business, yeah. yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, it's away from home. And then we've got Chelsea. You don't know what fucking Chelsea are going to turn up yet. No, you don't. And that's the problem. Yeah, and they've got quality individuals that can hurt you. Cold they Palmer. did last season, yeah. They, they, let's be honest. What did they beat us last week? Five? Five, yeah. Five nil. Chelsea. They were terrible. Yeah. You know I mean? But... But most teams, a lot of teams did. I will say, yeah. I will say, yes, we play like we did today in both league games. We'll give results. Yeah, like I said, I feel like we're not even at our best. Like we haven't, we haven't got all our players up to speed. We've still got, you know, Soler to come in if he's going to be the first choice. But you know, what I mean, we're not where we want to be. So I just feel like we're, we're going to be better. We haven't seen the best of Lopetegui's West Ham. And yeah, I mean, had a result that done me today. Yeah, Everton. That's that's got a two new up. Mate. 87th minute, they, yeah. they get a goal back. 96th minute, Bournemouth for three two up. Mate, I checked it. I checked it at uh, 84 minutes, and I said, "Fucking old two nil, yeah, like yeah. two nil. Oh well, that's done. As, as I was walking into the ground, it was. It must have been getting it coming to the end. Mm. I said to my brother because he was telling me the results. I went, how are Everton getting on? He went, they're 2 new up. I went, what, finished 2 new? And he went, no, I've got a couple of minutes left. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I see. I saw it. I went, what? Like, 3 2. So, listen, Daishi, could, that Moyes could be uh, in for a sensational. Could, no, I think he could go back there, you know. I think he could go back there. I think, I they, just, that, I think they'd bite his fucking hand off for him at the minute. If I, I was, mean, this this, yeah. this Sean Daish thing, I mean, it, listen, he was meant to be out. He was in the running for our manager for a little while. They, they, they were saying if they got rid of Moyes, that's who they're <laughs> going to fucking bring in. Um, Sean Dyche, which I was never a fan of. It's an, I know Sean Dyche gets you grinding results. They've got really too much quality over there. Yeah, they've I, I just... Too said, much quality, I, and they've not brought anybody in. I, I, I don't think, and a lot of them are Dyche, I don't think anyone could fucking knock the job that Dyche has done. He, they had, like, what, 10 points deduction last season, and he comfortably kept them up. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I thought they looked season decent before. last season. Yeah. But every season, I don't want to get into it, but every yeah. season, yeah, they're getting points Ooh, deducted, yeah. yeah, but they're losing quality as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they're losing quality. They, they sold that Anana. You can't, they can't afford to lose a player like him. No. They ain't got, they ain't got a lot of quality well, anyway. Well, Dyer said they, started, they built the team around him yeah. and played into him. And listen, Anana, we wanted him, we tried to get him. Yeah, he would have been a, a, a good signing for us. That's yeah. another one we but missed that was, out. That was a shocking result of the day. Yeah. Declan Rice getting sent off. Yeah, Ricey. That one was very controversial. Uh, I don't think it's... it's by, the le- listen, by the letter of the law. Letter yes, of the is. law. Scott, if he's but always... You know the there, thing that makes me laugh? Well. Is that kick's a fucking clump, Tim. Yeah. As he kicked that ball, that kick's a fucking up end of yeah. So if that wasn't West Ham... If that yeah. happened at West Ham, you'd be up in I can there. see why I, I said But that. I'm not see. having Lee judges turning around and saying things like referee, they referee us different and all that. Fuck off, Fuck like. off We've me. seen them get on, so mate. many fucking decisions time after time after time. But at the end of the day, the first yellow card Rice gave was ridiculous, reckless challenge. And in this second one, they've said they're clamping down this season on players delaying restarts, right? And that is what they've looked at he's doing. So he's, he's He definitely did that because yeah. he, he had his eye on, on he, him. Yeah, he had his eye. I thought he was very unlucky. He gets in front of him. He's tried to be sly about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. pokes the ball away. And then as he's doing that, obviously the geezer's just trying to um, he boot the ball. <laughs> he ain't. He's trying to boot him. He knew what he's Yeah, to, maybe. They both knew exactly what yeah, he was yeah. doing. Yeah, the, the, the big contention is, is there was an earlier instant where it went out for a throw and the... Brighton players who booted it down the pitch, he should have been booted. Right, right? and he wasn't. And he wasn't. Okay. So that, so I can understand Arsenal fans being upset at the lack of consistency. It's not just lack of consistency; it's everywhere. Yeah. We yeah. see it trying, like, for them to say that, oh, we're Arsenal are victims. You could go to so many games. You go to like a game where decisions gone one way. The thing is, and- listen, we all do it. We all do it as football fans. Yeah, we all think because we we're in do, our own bubble. Yeah, we all think we're getting fucking fucked over, but you don't see the other. 
incidents, do you? You don't, you don't, you're, you're not watching your it switch in Forest, then you're not watching Fulham and fucking Derby or yeah. whatever it is. Look, look, I don't uh, like people mentioning Derby lately. Like, you know? Bournemouth have been fucked over multiple. Newcastle, we had a handball goal. Yeah, two games in a row, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they've had, you know, big issues. So, listen. VAR uh, seems to be getting involved a lot less this season. Yes, uh, which is good. Which is good. It's it's good to see. But look, I, I'm I'm all for them actually punishing these players that do delay when such no, no, I agree with it. I agree with it. But but they need to do it. But you need to. There, there's there's times today. There was there was an incident today. If you're gonna delay, if you're gonna stop it, that um, if two one, the player come over to take a throw on. He walked to the ball, picked up the ball, went to as if he was going to throw it, took about 15 seconds and then just dropped it and went, that, that's time wasted as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to cramp down, if you're going to go cramp down on one thing, you'll cramp down on everything. Yeah, that's it. Just stop it. And, that, and ultimately, I wish like, that one's wasted time. Like, I guess I'm a fucking Well, tits. that's it. Because someone said to me, oh, you don't want to see yellow cards given for such silly things. But you do because what it does is it stops players doing it. If you keep punishing, people get red cards for fucking time wasting. What's, how many players are going to fucking time once? Yeah. Right? Yeah, You're no, going to see him just get on with it. And, and what is going to mean? Is... down and putting the shirts in the box as well. I see a lot yeah. of that today. Yeah. I see a lot of it today. Both sides. Yeah. You so can... they're not going down That's on it. it at all. But this is what I'm saying. If they do, you start preventing it and we get a better, more entertaining game. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it makes for, you know. Like I said, today overall, I thought was, was, was entertaining. Like I said, it weren't 90 minutes of just non-stop action. You're never going to get that against Man City. You have to have periods of of control, consolidation. I, I know people are going to call me mad because it's it's mad to say you're happy with a loss, but I'm happy with the performance. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy because this is our third. the manager was animated again. The, the changes were right at the right times. You know what I mean? He, he wasn't waiting too long. He wasn't, you know, trying to and. He's shifting the way he's. He, he, you can see he's picking a team around who he's playing, rather than the more he's cut and paste. Do you, and do you know what the thing is? Like last season, like you could predict the substitutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could fucking predict it. So he's played yeah. before. Maybe because it's maybe it's because he's new. But I don't think it's just that. But I just I can't predict. I'm like surprised. Oh, suit checks coming on. Oh, interesting. Like so maybe it is. It is probably a factor of him being new. But I think it's also just that. He doesn't just just pick the same names you swap for you. Yeah, yeah. He thinks about it and he thinks, okay, this guy is going to be key because of this is how the game's going. Yeah, yeah. So no, you can see the thought process. In yeah, so, uh, he's a tactician. I don't know why he bought Emerson off. Must have felt something. Must have. Yeah, because he brought Emerson off. Put. Uh, do you know what? What what he could probably see because I think there was more threat. Coming down, our... Oh, you're right there. <laughs> That's his first bit. I'm not even halfway through it. <laughs> there was there was more danger coming down our left. They wasn't getting much joy down our right against Juan Bissaka. Yeah. Emerson is more of an attacking fullback than a defensive fullback, so it could be tactical. Let's bring Emerson on. Let's bring Juan Bissaka, who's our best defensive fullback there. Sufal. He's not as good defensively as Wan Bissaka, but he's better than Emerson. Yeah. Put him on the right. Maybe there was that just to balance it up and help us defensively a little bit more on the wings. Uh, because yeah, Wan Bissaka, I think I thought he dealt with Grealish very well. Yeah, yeah. Today and yeah, you can see he was just frustrated. Grealish, I can't think of much he's really done today. No, no, no. you know. But uh, again, I think that's and that's I think that's you know obviously they won the game, so they're going to be well happy. But I think. We very much limited them to, yeah. to you know, to, to nothing. It was just the difference was it was the centre forward, which I can't complain about. Can you start wrapping it up then? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Ultimately, look, international break, then we're on to Fulham. Um, so look, I, that is a game we want to win, Mike. It's going to be tough. It's a way we want to look at three points for that. Yeah. That's that's key. Let's get another three points because. And we want to start building some momentum. We don't leave London till November. Well, when's Liverpool, Liverpool. game? Yeah, that fucking had to ruin it, didn't they? Yeah, that, I mean, no, I'm he's go and that. check his video yeah. out if you haven't on it. Um, so yeah, but watch the fan cams. Do check those out. 
I'll be back tomorrow morning after the game before. Yes, yes, do check that out. And then, yeah, we're going to have some content over the international break. Keep we're going to do a nice little quiz over there. I've got I have something in mind. Quiz. The, uh, I am still break. the undefeated quiz marshal, West Ham fan TV. You it's know. A different type of quiz, this one. Different type of quiz. Never lost a quiz on West Ham fan <laughs> TV. We'll see. Oh, no, that's going to be a mean now. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, one thing left for us to say. Uh, listen, if you're new around here, subscribe. Thank you to Sport Bone Grill at Canary Wolf. Come on over and see us because we're going to do more content here. Um, maybe pre match game and all of that sort of thing. We want to start seeing you. Um, and maybe we can start doing some live stuff in front of audience here. Um, they're very, there's loads of room here. It's, they're very much uh, uh, welcoming. So thank you very much to Sports Bar and Grill over at Canary Wolf. Just under the Big Easy. Come and, come and check it out. Um, it's a great venue. You've got darts and all that sort of thing here. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we can come over here, do some darts with people. Yeah. Maybe we'll come over here over the international break and play some darts and stuff. Let's do some Maybe fun. a pool competition. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, but um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you're new around here, subscribe. One thing left to say. Come on, you want. I can't do it.